Welcome, this is an overall summary of domestic division labour and power relationships within the family unit. And it'll be a summary recap of the key theorists, key concepts, key ideas that you will have looked at in your pack. So let's begin. So let's take a look at the key theories here. So what we're going to look at is our relationships egalitarian. That's the first point here, this key concept, egalitarian. So again, as I say, more equal. And we're going to look at this in two ways. So have relationships become more equal? And the first argument we're going to look at is domestic division labour. So we're going to look at this topic here and we'll list all the theories and thinkers that say housework and domestic labour has become equal. This is to do with who is doing and taking on what job in the home? Is it housework? Is it domestic labour? Is it chores? Who is doing it? Is it men or women? Now, on the next slide, on the other side of this, sorry, we have the power relationships at the bottom here. So we'll also look at who has control of the family, who makes decisions, who controls money and finances. These will be the two arguments that we're going to take a look at as we move through this discussion. So most of the fingers we're going to see have appeared in previous topics within the theory of the family. Um, some of the theories and thinkers that we are familiar with. And, and actually, in some cases, their ideas haven't changed. We're just applying it to a different perspective. And there are a few little wild cards that will pop up in here as well. Now, our first thinker here is Parsons. Parsons talks about divisions within the home. Men take on the instrumental role. Women have the expressive role. Men are the breadwinners going out to work. Women are the caregivers who raise the children and stay at home. And that's, this is due to biological differences between men and women. Now, for Parsons' view, this is normal, this is natural, this is the ideal. So he's got a lot of smiley face there because he thinks that this segregation is good, that domestic division labour should be unequal because of the way men and women have been biologically designed. And that's coming from a functionalist perspective. Now, as an alternative functionalist view, we've got Wilmot and Young. They're slightly more contemporary. And one of the things they talk about in their view is this symmetrical family, which I've kind of got the little triangle over here to represent that. So the symmetrical family in their view is that men and women have become more equal. Men are taking a greater role in domestic work and house care. Women have entered the field of work right at the very beginning, because we talked about how we refer to sometimes as the neo-conventional family that fits this model that men and women both work, both do childcare, both do domestic work. And Wilmot and Young sort of saw that in the 1970s, this march of progress was taking place. We were moving towards equality, becoming more egalitarian. They also linked in the, the, the development of the new man, who is more home-centered, childcare focused, uh, more in tune with uh, the needs of the family, more involved in domestic work. And again, as, as masculinity changes, this is changing the nature of housework and domestic labour and divisions within the home. Now, as a major contradiction to both of these thinkers, you have Oakley, who appears here. Now, Oakley, also supporting the radical feminism or feminism arguments, says that women are oppressed by patriarchy. Women are left with a dual burden, that men's contributions to the housework are very minimal, if not none at all. So women have the responsibility of doing paid work. They also have to take on uh, domestic work and that's their sole responsibility. They have a dual burden. So they have two jobs to perform. Alongside this, we also have Duncan and Marsden. So again, developing out of what Oakley began with, it is very much the same idea, but they, they add an extra element. So it's almost Oakley plus one. And what they add is the notion of emotion work, which is this little, little hearts appearing uh, and labor of love. So women have to take on emotion work. So they're performing paid work, they're performing housework, and they're doing all this labor of love, this emotion work, controlling and supporting and managing the needs of the family. And emotion work covers stuff like upset children right through to uh, sick relatives and providing care for those. So again, on this argument, fits the side that the division of labor is unequal and that's not okay, as opposed to Parsons who, who thinks it's unequal, but that's the way it should be. Now, in the middle, we have Guernsey. Now, Guernsey kind of fits in the middle. He's kind of a, a, more of a recognizes the change that's occurring. Families are changing. And he talks about this process called lagged adaptation. 
Now, effectively, what this lagged adaptation means is that as women enter the field of work and enter the world of work, and they increase the amount of time they spend in paid employment, that reduces the amount of time they have for housework. Now, what will happen in this situation is men will start to pick up more housework uh, as women do more paid work. And the notion that it's a lagged adaptation, it takes men a while to catch up. So it takes a, a while between um, women doing more paid work and men starting to pick up more domestic work around the home. So it kind of fits in the middle and it shows change um, and it's not kind of heavily fitting in either side of the scale. On a similar notion, we have Silver and Score, who talk about the commercialization of the housewife, housewife role. Housework has become easier, quicker because of technology like Hoover's and washing machines, which do a bulk of the, the laborious tasks. So their notion is that men should be able to do more because it's easier to do housework. This also fits in with the Future Foundation study, which is mentioned within the same box, that 60% of men claim to do more housework than their fathers, 75% of women do less than their mothers. And if again, if it fits in the middle, this is a positive step. It shows change, but we could say, you know, relationships are not truly equal, but they're kind of in the process of becoming more equal. Now, the next thing we have is done. Now, done is looking at gender scripts within the family, particularly looking within same sex couples. And her argument is that, uh, as it would appear in Difference Feminism earlier, that in a same-sex couple, there are no gender scripts. There's no defined male or female role. Same-sex couples have a greater degree of negotiation. So they can choose who takes on domestic work, family and childcare, who is going to take on paid work. Um, and also it creates a more equal relationship with couples having sort of more of a 40-60 split in terms of housework. Uh, so it, it suggests that, that gender roles maybe have a greater role to play in the vision of labor. Now, again, we've also got an updated version of Oakley studying your pact from 2000 um, and, and sort of look at the idea that a lack of gender scripts, again, allowed more flexible parenting, negotiating on who would take on roles and seeing um, motherhood rather than one parent's responsibility or parenting one responsibility of the mother. Uh, and again, having more of a, a division and then we have postmodernism as our last argument towards equality. So again, in this sense, as society changes, we can pick and mix the family roles, we can negotiate, we can change. And we've seen this trend towards couples becoming more equal, men taking on more sort of, sort of arguments like men staying at home, become stay at home dads, women going into the workplace. So postmodernism has a role to play. And we have our first wild card entry here, so globalization. Now, I've put this one in on the basis that as we become a global society, as people move more into the UK, this creates more job roles, particularly in terms of stuff like cleaners, gardeners, childminders, which I've put as an equal argument is in a, in a way that it creates equality because neither the male or the female or the parents are doing these tasks and they've been outsourced to someone else. So that covers the domestic division labor. Uh, then we have the power relationships I mentioned before, who controls the family. Now, our first thinker here is Ed Gell. Ed Gell is writing in the 1980s and he talks about decision-making. Now I've put him kind of leaning towards the right and the no argument um, that men and women are not equal in power relationships because he says that you know, men take more control over key decisions uh, than women are allowed to make decisions that are less important and women solely make the least or non-important decisions. Now this is more, it's not as far right or sort of far to the no as I would normally put it on the basis that we have seen significant change in society in the last 20, 30 years. So again, at the time, it would have been an argument that relationships are not equal, but I think as society progresses and, and a lot of this is contributed to money and who earns the money and who controls it which relates to our next thinkers, Thal and Vogler, who are in the middle. Now they talked about the allowance system. In the past, men controlled money. That gave men power in the home. This has now changed that we've entered a pooling system. They sort of suggested that couples would pool resources together and therefore that creates greater equality. 
And then in 2001, because Fall and Vogue were right in the 80s, 2001, Weeks comes along and again, puts it even further, the growth of co-independence. So couples pooling resources into a shared fund for joint costs and bills and uh, outgoings, but both partners retain independence by having their own bank account and own financial responsibility. So again, the growth of co-independence is often more common in younger couples, in same-sex couples, who, who kind of have greater control over their own financial responsibilities. And the last arguments for inequality, uh, we have Dobash and Dobash, who talk about how domestic violence occurs in the home. This shows that men often use patriarchal power to oppress women, and therefore power relationships are not equal because men are more likely to oppress women. If we were going to kind of be a bit sort of devil's advocate here, we could look at the idea of, you know, the growth of men being victims of domestic violence could be a signal of growing equality that we might see this notion of domestic violence as, it, as unfortunate is that it's not necessarily solely related to male and females offenders. It's just something that happens in families. And as the fact that we've seen it's now one in six men are to victims of domestic violence, um, which, you know, 10 years ago, the figure was one in seven. So we have seen this growth of equality there in, in an odd way. And then we also have Donovan. Now Donovan's here, again, slightly different color because it's, it's talking about same sex couples and domestic violence. Um, now this would say that relationships are not equal. Any, any relationship with domestic violence is not equal. But the difference being is that Donovan sort of suggests that this might be due, due to money and that financial pressures and stresses cause domestic violence. So Again, I've put this in a no, relationships are not equal if there's domestic violence and power imbalances here. But I, as, a, as an interesting note that, again, it's, it's the financial factors are, are more significant, that, that deprivation and lack of money and income is probably the triggers or some of the triggers for violence. And then finally, our last wild card in terms of power relationships. So we will, uh, you will be looking at cohabitation and how that's become more common in family structures. And one of the things about cohabitation that made me want to put that here is that cohabiting couples are generally more equal. The lack of gender scripts that, that Dunn kind of highlights in, in her research makes divisions of labor more equal. And so co, and this is also backed up by other fingers. Oh, yeah. Okay, and then just to sort of sum this up, so the arguments that show domestic division labour has not improved are these fingers here. So Parsons, Oakley, Duncan, Mars and Dobash and Dobash, Edgill and Donovan. DDOL has improved, would be Wilma and Young, postmodernism, we can use Dunn, Weeks, we can discuss the wild cards of cohabitation and globalisation. And then the middle ground thinkers, which kind of shows that DDOL is in the process of change, Guernsey, Silver and Score, Future Foundations, Fall and Vogue, can be used really either side. So either they can, you can use them in that DDO has not improved, is in the process of improving, or that it is more equal and is changing. So they can kind of be used depending on the nature of the question uh, asked. And finally, here are some exam questions just relating to this DDOL topic. Now, DDOL is a two-sided debate. A lot of the questions tend to focus on the idea of relationships becoming more equal or relationships are still unequal. And you can see the questions on the screen do tend to reflect that. So for the 20 marker here at the bottom, um, relationships have become more equal or are equal in modern times. The 20 mark, sorry, the 10 marker questions at the top here. So women's in pay, involvement in paid work has affected the structure, um, changing gender roles, childhood, being affected. So a lot of the questions talk about how the, there is a notion of change or whether change has occurred. As we've discussed we've had at the beginning, the 10 markers are ones to keep an eye on because they often are two step questions. So this is how has domestic division labour changes or change in the role of men and women affected the structure of the family or the childhood uh, experience? So again, we're relating what we know have covered in this topic to another area. 20 marker, is a little bit more straightforward. We'd just produce a number of arguments to say DOL has become equal and balance it out with arguments that show it has not. Okay, so I hope this has been helpful, this short overview of the DDOL topic.
as I said at the beginning of the video, use your packs, use your textbook, use any resources you need to support your understanding. And if at any point you're still unfamiliar or uncertain about topics, go back to your teacher and have a, a better discussion with them. Okay, I hope you found this useful and thank you for watching.